here after the group stages. They have won themselves through three series already, one in a 3-0, two in three twos, and now they are already 1-1 versus the previous BlizzCon team beyond the game. Let's see if they can keep up the spree as BTG are going to take them to the Tomb of the Spider Queen. Ah, the Tomb. We're jumping into this game number three here. Um, so here we go. We've seen Medivh band out basically every single, actually, yes, every single game. Garrosh, heavy yep. emphasis during the early <laughs> portions of the game. Again, RPG just with the immediate ban on the Medivh. I'm loving it. But if you're BTG, what are you banning? Okay, so there we go. There's the Garrosh. So very quick are these bans. And here we go. RPG now looking at their first pick, likely going to be the Stukov again. I think we might have desynced at some point during the break. Do we want to just recheck quickly? Absolutely. Let's let's do it right now. Yeah, I'm on 6-6. Six, six. Ooh. 6-2. That'll do. Solid. So, like you said, the Stukov coming in here very quickly. We haven't missed anything during our quick resyncing sessions as we do cast from clean feed, ladies and gentlemen. And Zeratul stolen away in the first two rotations what? by BTG. We were talking That's about weird for China, even. Yeah, we were talking about Mouthail being early. Let's talk about how early the Zera tool is. <laughs> Holy moly! But uh, you know, we've seen you know the way that the Zera tool is being played in this region, and and it looked so promising last game. Yes, maybe a few just lapses in judgment. You know, a couple times stepping up a little bit too far, getting CC'd, getting caught in those rotations was a Zera tool. But you know, that's not to say that's going to happen for BTG. You know, yeah. this is early emphasis. I love to see it. RPG. They got the Stukov. Garrosh is banned out here. Um, do they look at Tyrael again? Uh, yeah, this is a heavy wave clear map, and when you're against a you know the pick composition like this, maybe that's something you want to go to. But we have to talk about the sanctification and void prison issues. You know, if Sanct is or if Tyrael is the choice of warrior for RPG, then you can always just void the sanctification and then engage off of that because sanctification actually times out during the void prison. But it's the Mayev. Ooh, it's spicy and the Tyrael. So very standard uh, opener so far for RPG. But we have have to pay attention to the clustered style that RPG have, and you're playing against a Void Prison, so it can be very scary. The Junkrat is banned out. That would be a really good hero to just siege into a Warden's Cage, so very nice choice here. Greyman is still available, though, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. He's another hero who can get really stuck in there. But yeah, like I said, we seem to have a at least three heroes who are the go-to for RPG's current drafting style, and it's impossible to ban all of them out, but when BTG did last game, giving them out of all of these only the Stukov, it went very well for them. So interesting to see if this could perhaps be a potential flaw in RPG's drafting style, a potential one trick. Could be. Tracer being uh, hovered as the ban of choice for RPG. The pick potential with the Zeratul Tracer is disgusting to say the least. You know, Maya <laughs> has to kind of pick and choose which ability she's going to be using Vault of the Wardens against. Uh, you know, most of the times, especially post 10, it is the Pulse Bomb if you're playing against the Tracer, but Band Out is that hero, so no Tracer pickup for BTG going to be a possibility, and no Junkrat. So I wonder what their main range is going to be. You know, we've obviously seen Genji, Hanzo, all yeah. likely pickups here, um, but I don't know if you play the Genji against Maya and the Tyrael. Goldan, I'm liking it. The disengage tool, if you're going to hard engage on us and we can't leave because the Warden's Cage will make you leave the Warden's Cage via the Horrify. And of course, that big group up damage, you can either time it after a Sanctification or even just drops a load of Siege damage onto where the Sanctification is set up, get the value that way. The Tick damage to try and out-time the Tyrael Shields, good but interesting and risky choice due to its vulnerability to burst is the cooldown. Yeah, and a vulnerability to dive. So, you know, you're playing against yeah. this the dive style composition that RPG hosts. You know, Goldan basically only emphasis on the wave clear, but if they can control those waves, manipulate those waves properly, they're going to be able to, you know, set this up in their favor. We've got the Hanzo as well for BTG. Uh, and I definitely think the, the Hanzo over Genji is the choice here for BTG. I'm liking that they ended up going that hero. Warrior still not picked up for BTG. That will be the last pickup, but basically they, they wanted to flex their warrior instead of locking it in this early. So RPG against this, do you just go more dive at this point? Try to pick up this Hanzo, pick up this Gul'dan? I mean, what tank would be a punish? It would be so punishing for a dive that they would be punished for going more dive here. Maybe an ETC, maybe a Diablo. 
Muradin, possibly, but the uh, Arthur's if it's a melee dive. But the majority of the tanks that BTG could pick up here wouldn't be too punishing towards dives. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing them continuing down this path. RPG though, they need their offlaner. Uh, and likely arranged. Uh, Genji is up to kind of satisfy that dive condition. We'll see if they go Genji plus an offlaner. Phoenix comes Leo through. Phoenix. Here we go. Lots of wave clear with that hero. Uh, but you're playing this Phoenix against a Hanzo, which is an excellent matchup for Phoenix. And then the securing uh, kill potential of Zeratul. So Phoenix definitely has to be cautious here. And I was actually going to mention Leoric as being the offlaner of choice for RPG. It, you know, I would... Personally, say it would be Blaze, uh, just because that's the meta I'm used to, but I expected perhaps a Leoric, and we are seeing it here. BTG now, against this Phoenix, against this Leo, what is their warrior of choice? There is no beneficial warrior against Leoric, really. He's mm -hmm. He gets percentage damage value no matter what. And seeing as they already have their soul laner, in which case this game case is Zeratul, they aren't going to be able to react to that matchup. So it is really going to be all about that Phoenix, which is why I wouldn't mind seeing Varian as the solo tank here and just go for a lot of single target. It's probably the best single target lockdown punishment, perhaps taunting the uh, taunting the Maiev could be the play here. Definitely could. ETC, another possibility for BTG, yeah. but they go the safe route. They want the Johanna. Uh, the blinds against Phoenix. It, it could that's be. True. But this is Tomb, you know, heavy emphasis on wave clear, and uh, but they already do have the Hanzo. They've got the Gul'dan, so a lot of wave clear on the side of BTG already, but I just, I see the blinds being very useful against the dive composition that RPG hosts, uh, and especially against the Phoenix, you know, a primarily ranged auto attack style hero, so those blinds are going to be able to get additional value here, but I like RPG's draft a lot, um, especially if we're just going to compare them. I, I like I like their draft better, if I'm going to be so bold. I would agree. The majority of the times we have seen Phoenix in HCC China, when it's been paired with Maiev, it has won. When it hasn't, it has lost. Hmm. So uh, RPG, going with that kind of strat here, plus the slows they've added in here. Stukov Weighted Postule, Tyrael Eldruin Smite, Leoric, Leoric Skeletal Swing. They've got so many slows to set up for that, uh, for, th uh, for that Purification Salvo. Unless, of course, they want to go super crazy and do Planet Karaka Warden's Cage, which could be a Amazing to be fair. I actually but purification salvo a bit more likely. I mean in tomb plus planet cracker, like oh, you know, let's dude, we're getting a little that. bit dirty here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm into it, but here we go. RPG on the left and blue. We got chicken playing that Phoenix. Uh we got MJ on the Stukov saw playing the Medivh here. We got or sorry, Maev. We got SEA on I didn't quite see, saw. but we'll move saw. Sorry. We'll we'll move forward. Yeah. So good. 619 on Johanna, LLK on Zeratul, Druid on Mafurian, Dancing on Hanzo, Lai on Gul'dan. They are BTG. And the ones you missed, it is Saar playing on the... I'd assume it would be the Leoric. Uh, no, he'll be on the... Wait, where would he be? Uh, we'll leave MJ on the Stukov, and it is Saar on the Maiev. Yeah, that was it. And then C on Tyrael. You were saying earlier, it's yeah. a little bit confusing. Saw and C on the same team. Yes, it is. The they're, C saw. Yeah, nice. They're trying to confuse I'm, I'm me on my first team. day in China, man. It's not very nice. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the C saw team. They're very up and down in performance. As we see a lovely cleave from 619 straight away. And Zeratul tries to drop damage, only really pops uh -oh. the shield chicken with the body blocks. That big old uh, body of Phoenix able to secure the first kill. Yeah, Zeratul doesn't do very well in these all-out 5v5s, uh, you know, especially against the shields of Phoenix, the shields of Tyrael, and the silence capabilities. So just overstepping their boundaries a little bit is BTG, and already just not off to the right you know, start here for them. Um, once the later stages of the game comes through, I really feel like this Phoenix is going to be difficult to kill. You know, the, you're going to have the damage reduction from Leoric, uh, I see Phoenix surviving quite well during the late game. As do I. There's no, there's no dedicated shield damage, of course, um, as we don't have the two Lie. heroes. Who, well, three heroes who have it. Lie pulled in. The route from Malfurion It's pretty good to open up the escape route here. So much so that they're able to turn around with 619, putting on the pressure, but it's not enough to execute any kind of kill. RPG. They're controlling uh, the rotations quite well, which you would expect given their composition. Um, but BTG, they just need to start getting this wave clear that their their comp boasts. Johanna stepping forward with that iron skin, getting big condemn value here. But BTG, they're not 
able to step up their ranged carries here to look for that uh, the, the the wave clear that Gul'dan provides. So falling a little bit behind, and now Malfurion stepping up too far, getting picked off. But Saw also with the excellent uh, Vault of the Wardens able to escape. Lie now the focus. Does he have the drain life? He does for just a moment, but it's not enough. And now the turn kills. LK also dropping low, the commitment from Chicken Ooh. gets the kill with the laser. Nicely done there. Chicken, the legend. Here we go. Four for nothing. RPG just absolutely dominating this early game. And like I said, like it looks like they win skirmishes. That's absolutely true. But BTG's wave clear is immense and the fact that they're not able to step up their range to get this wave clear dominance is proving to be such an issue rpg already on their bruiser camp just looking at making matters worse for their opponents phoenix in this off lane position chicken just flexing down bottom i love what they're doing with this hero so do i they're using it really well especially with the mobile offense at level one he is putting on so much pressure even with those phase bombs uh, using the extra range to maximum efficiency when it comes for the chase here. Really good job for the moment, as now we see him re-rotating back up to his team, saying hello, seeing if they want to do anything, but not taking the risk for the moment. Level 4, by the way, he's going with the emergency protocol, just in case. So, dancing going Redemption level 1, I think that's pretty bold against the style of comp that RPG has. Is stacked, um, but... You know, playing against a Maiev, <clears throat> excuse me, playing against a Maiev with that can be absolutely devastating. But there we go. We got this turn in. Very true indeed. It, to be fair, this is a map where it's a little bit harder to land those, sc those scatter arrows. Uh, still going with the explosive shot, which is the most standard one for redemption. We'll have to see how it works out. The armor reduction could be exactly what they need in some cases. It's going to just be all the up to dancing in terms of execution here. As, like you said, the turn in on the way. RPG looking to punish someone in advance. See if they can get a kill and uh, empower these turns even more as they move forward. 619, though, being very aggressive, Kala. Yeah, RPG, basically, this is a faux uh, step up up top. Yes, they have uh, the Stukov to stop everything, but you're playing against the Gul'dan, not really what RPG are focusing on. Bottom lane is going to be able to get the most amount of value for RPG. This is a Phoenix against a Zeratul matchup down here. Zeratul not really able to step up and do a lot when it comes to clear. So look at this bottom, already just everything pushed in. Now the fort is being focused, and RPG with the rotation from top to mid, picking up wall after wall. So much of an XP lead for RPG during this early game. They're looking good. A small fort shot onto C, but he is fine, able to back up. Stukov will eventually heal that up. And if not, fountains are available. Zero, by the way, sticking with the normal justice for all and then reciprocate later on. No swift retribution, which I would have thought would be pretty decent with Phoenix, but that's not the style they wish to go for. No. Phoenix going to be fine getting all that damage by himself, but Druid yeah. <laughs> getting caught out a little bit here, able to step away. The root was absolutely massive. You were talking about, uh, you know, Druid being such a huge, uh, like a, a carry player for BTG and, and small plays like that. While, you know, it is just root placement, stuff like that is what really carries a team. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my every good assassin is a great support, great leap by dancing here. Druid is so low as well in full retreat. Run, Druid, he gets away. How did everyone from BTG live there? Chicken's back with a plasma cutter, but it's not enough to finish the job. Saw taking the spirit in in a 2v4 scenario. The silence was absolutely massive, getting so many resets there on the fan and knives. We're seeing why RPG plays so much emphasis on this hero, and man, is it ever paying off. I'm absolutely loving this Maiev play. As am I. This, yeah, like I said, this is why they put the priority onto it. Scouting out getting ready to punish if anyone steps too far forward here and they're looking good in the meantime mercenary camp in the bot lane being picked up but they back up a little bit and okay they saw the shimmer but they're gonna be able to finish the job here due to the fact that the rest of btg oh, is doing no. a bruiser camp and sneaky 619 turn in liking it yeah rpg not covering all of their bases very well and they were so close to level 10 so this would have been a near flawless early game for rpg but not only did they give turn in when it, they should have been able to to basically secure the next one for themselves but they also allowed btg to take their bruiser camp when you know they shouldn't have been able to do it so easily so rpg just missing the mark here when it comes to macro but 
you know, that's okay. They rotated with their siege camp bottom. They picked up a lot of structural damage onto this fort. Bottom going to be almost irrelevant, but BTG with this wave clear, pushing in top, pushing in mid, they're looking to do something with this first turn in, but level 10's here for RPG, so they have to yeah. be careful about overstepping their boundaries. Carla, you made my dreams come true in Tomb Planet Cracker <laughs> with a Warden's Cage as well. They have it set up. They've even got a massive shove. Get in the, ho get in the Entomb. They are fully set up for one of the greatest Wombo combos. Also, cool Dan finished stacking pretty early, earlier than, well, themselves, as they have, seem to have the fastest Gul'dan stacks overall. There we go. Is oh. The Panacracker slightly whiffed him, but the damage is still landing. They get the kill. Nice channeling there, forcing him to back up into the Entomb and they pick up the kill on Gul'dan. I'm so excited that this is what we get to see. <laughs> like, we were talking about perhaps some of the synergies that RPG can have with their draft, and we mentioned the Entomb and Planet Cracker, and we saw it right there, folks. You know, it wasn't yeah. the best, uh, you know, uh, line up of those abilities but if we're talking level 20s coming through that's the silence that's the you know planet cracker, cracker through multiple targets perhaps you get a lot of value with this one but uh Maev stepping up a little bit there taking some damage from 619 on that johanna but now btg they want to try to get in as many gems as they can but rpg oh, with that sneaky yeah. turn in bottom leoric getting those gems for them uh planet cracker going to be offline for a little bit here but rpg with the second turn into the game chicken Pretty wounded, actually. Looks like he started this camp, but already healed up by Sukov. Shields recharging. He will be fine. Mafurin, once again, holding level 10s. I'm really okay with this. I think more people should do this until they know exactly what they need when they need it. Finally picking in the Tranquility here. Uh, I can see why. You're going to get dived and potentially silenced by Stukov anyway. You might as well just at least have the healing if you can get it off before the silence. The Auric taken out in this bot lane here. Nice moving by BTG. RPG now just looking to advance further. 619 is the target for themselves. There's the Iron Skin, but Deep is the Medi or Maev here, and she's in a lot of trouble this stun coming out, but she's able to escape just for a moment is here with know? that Spirit of Vengeance. The chase is on! The shield is dropped. Nice job by the nice job by the Tyrrell here. See, also oh. get that dancing, going hands for sanctification. Oh, they turn it round. Oh, played dancing. Get baited, mate. Oh my gosh, Maev with the perfect bait back the entire time. BTG push out so far into that engagement. There is the Entomb, oh, the Planet Cracker to follow up. Dear. 619 is the target and <laughs> evaporated. I love the combo so much. That is the greatest thing I've ever seen in this game. But RPG played that one so well. They bait back. They bait in the Hanzo. They get that sanctification, get more kills. And RPG just absolutely dominating that bottom side engagement. As Cloakham would say, a more immediate way to deal massive damage. Combined <laughs> with that Entomb, it's so scary to deal with. And RPG, two level lead at nine minutes, soon to be ten. They are looking good. They have half the gems needed for another turn as well. So, real question. Does Phoenix go uh, cooldown on abilities? Uh, I hope so. So that uh, right. the Planet Cracker comes up more often? We will have to see. Uh, but RPG executing their team fights so well. We'll see if they're able to just continue this trend moving forward. But Siege Camp picked up for RPG, so bottom lane pressure is there. They have to be cautious of their opponents hitting this 13 mark and getting the, uh, the next three gems for their oh, turn. Is it, oh, oh, man. It's not up. The Horrify is dropped, though. It's a bit of chaos in the Entomb. Here comes the Warden's Cage. Every Pulled into the Stokov silence as Ghoul Dad goes down. The healing from Stokov healed all of that damage Dancing was able to do. LLK has got nothing. He wants to wrap around, but everyone's too healthy. And well, everyone else escapes, Sarah? but oh, feel better, Pasta Cutter. Yeah, it's oh. out though. 13's just about here for BTG. They want to try to find their escape. The Silence getting a little bit of value. Void Prison already spent. So RPG, they push in even further. Meanwhile, bottom side, their Siege Camp getting some value. Going to be on the Keep Wall very soon. Forcing a rotation from BTG. And knowing that a single member has to be represented bottom. Do RPG do something drastic here and force? No, they don't. Okay. I wanted to see if perhaps they, they looked to uh, you know get a little bit wild. Force on the boss there. But instead, they're just going to take this opportunity to freely uh, turn in their gems here. Yeah, they need like 10 gems, I think, if I can count right. Nine gems. They need nine gems, and then they'll be good. So three minion waves. 
and they will be able to get the turn in themselves, and then they could even potentially try for the boss if they want to be super risky. In Tomb, jo uh, I mean, Phoenix is a little close if he wanted to plan it cracker there, <laughs> takes a huge amount of poison damage. There's the sanctification, and they weren't able to finish off Johanna. Too tanky at this stage. And honestly, too heroic spent just to kind of get away from that fight is RPG, and they're not level 16s yet, so I would expect BTG to heavily step into these areas of contest and look for their turn in they are meeting the turn in condition sooner than their opponents so i would definitely expect btg to get aggressive here and here we go johanna finding this maev a little bit of damage the vault of the wardens to escape to safety yeah, the vault was good, able to teleport away with the Spirit of Vengeance. Nice little job there. Those hammers gaining some scouting by Johanna, though. Really good value. Leoric from the side, though, finds that okay. A little bit of damage. Not able to drain. And Iron Skin, enough for Johanna to escape. Leoric oh, now just with, Ooh, the Entomb Planet Cracker dancing has nowhere to go except for over the wall because this is Hanzo, but 619 now the target ends up going down in this engagement. Gul'dan on the right hand side of the fight, not quite caught, but is Malfurion caught between a rock and a hard place. There goes the yep. ice block, but not enough to save him. And RPG, they pick up these two kills. Their turn in coming in very, very soon here. The 16 talent tier for them, finding those kills. Man, RPG just absolutely dominating this game. Really, really nicely done by RPG. That Planet Cracker as well, even though it wasn't the best angle, it was good enough to make it so Johanna had to walk through it to escape, and that was enough for them to pick up the kill on her. Really good job so far by RPG this game. Their combos, even the ones that haven't been perfect, have all been value. That's true. That's a good way to put it. But turn in here for RPG. They also procced their bruisers. This is the second time in the game where they have got this um, turn-in combination with their bruiser camp, so getting further value with their turn-in. I love the fact that RPG set it up like this every single time. And now, you know, Leoric starting to really come online, but we are seeing a different style build with him, that 13 and 16 instead, just heavily emphasizing the W build to try to perhaps just deal with this Johanna easier instead of peeling for his teammates. It's different, that's for sure. You see the seat, the uh, attempted siege move again. There's the entomb and planted cracker on the 619, but he's able to squeeze out of there. Moves around his wall and he escapes even through the purple web weaver wave. Dancing also leaping away to freedom and good move by BTG. All still alive. Now they're looking for their opportunity. Clean out this web weaver, clean the lane so that if RPG wants to stay, they'll be fighting under the keep. But a minion wave arrives just in time. Bad news for BTG. Void Prism has to be used just to live here. Oh, see ya. And BTG, it looked like they were flirting with the idea of a counter engage, but no 16 here. They just have to hold on to this game at this point. And I love the way that RPG is using their Phoenix as a pseudo global, sticking him in the side lane, just getting this push generated, and then using the Planet Cracker to participate in team fights when he's able. I absolutely love what RPG is doing with their draft. Mid keep picked up, bottom keep picked up, top is being pushed in right now. Relentless is the advance of RPG. They're continuing to put on the pressure here. The overcharge for Chicken. That cooldown reduction, as you called earlier, very accurately. Get the cooldown reduction on that Planet Cracker. And so he can have it up as often as possible. He's going to be in attack speed range for that reason. Uh, attack speed mode, the rapid fire mode. Uh, a little bit more consistently now for that reason, because more cooldown reduction. Yeah, and it's nice when he can also just get on a camp. We see immediately Phoenix going bottom lane to get on the siege <laughs> camp. He's like, I want Planet Cracker up right now. I want to find this combination with Entomb. So, yeah, getting value out of that 16 tier talent. So RPG, yeah. I I just got a giant smile on my face, man. Like this, the style of composition that they have, the way they've been executing it. Yes, you you said it perfectly. They haven't been getting the perfect Entomb Planet Crackers, but they've been valuable every single time. And that's really what matters. Okay. Tempo Storm already qualified for mid-season brawl. I will not be if I see uh, if we end up seeing it. Here comes another Planet Cracker 619. It's interrupted this time though. Good bless Shield, and as such, 619 survives. They move forward and forward a turnaround. Sink. Material getting stuck in. The Sank is good. Dancing Force back. The Void Prism by Zeratul for the turnaround. This is a really back and forth fight. The massive shove onto the Gul'dan pushing it back. As Tyrael is the only death in this fight. Saw takes the long way out there with the just on the edge of the Spirit of Vengeance. Zeratorb a little bit more damage. Leoric 
able to Wraith walk away, but BTG pick up the kill this time. Yeah, so BTG, I really liked the way that they played their Void Prison there, uh, waiting for the Sanctification and Warden's Cage combo to come out, and then voiding the backline so that RPG can't press in with those two huge heroics and get anything reasonable off of it. I loved how BTG oh, played this. that one out, but yeah, bottom lane push for <laughs> RPG is huge. BTG have to back up and clear this one, or it's going to take some core damage there. But here we go. We got, we got the turn in. This could be anyone's game at this point, you know, it's not over. Yeah, there's three forts available here for BTG. If they get that, maybe a kill for some comeback XP. This is absolutely a recoverable game by them. Getting themselves to that 20 as quick as possible. Moving back in, Hanzo's not here. He has Dragon Arrow, but not play of the game. As LLK drops a good old chunk of damage here. With the zoning lurking arm by yeah. MJ. Exactly what RPG leads to so just buy themselves some time here and soak their own level 20 and prevent this big snowball from BTG. RPG not interested in fighting at any point here. Yeah. They want to hit that level 20. They have a lot of wave clear. We see Chicken just immediately clearing top. Mid was cleared out in seconds here. And now Catapult will assist on bottom side as well. RPG likely going to... They'll, they'll concede this for it. They don't care about it. It doesn't get their opponents to uh, you know 20 very quickly. It gives them some XP, but uh, RPG, they just want to play the slow game until they hit 20. Very smart play so far uh, during this turn-in phase for BTG. And here will be 20. Second, they found a minion, which Tyrael has in abundance in those bottom lanes as we see them moving in. So, the Buried Alive. Mm -hmm. This was the final piece of the puzzle for RPG for this Wombo combo here. The, cons the silencing in Tomb plus that Planet Cracker is going to be terrible. And we even have protection for Phoenix, Unconquerable Spirits. That extra shielding if he takes fatal damage. As we see a big horrify though, this could be the opportunity BTG are looking for. Dragon Arrow lands too, but sank too good. Spirit of Vengeance, Void Prism though. This is what won them the fight last time. LLK dropping the damage. So with the Warden's Cage, but Zeratul moves in here. Comes the Planet Cracker, does not land on anyone here. Rogue is trying to do damage. It's already two for zero though. This is terrible news uh -oh. for RPG. It's Chicken gets that shielding from the Unconquerable Spirit. Forced to back up LLK with the damage. The ticking damage from that rending cleave. Eve picks up the kill. Dancing barely survives tower damage, but three for zero in favor of BTG. This is what they needed into a level 20, Kala. RPG stepping up too far. We see the Planet Cracker and the Entomb getting zero value there. LLK just completely dominating uh, Maiev in this exchange. Chicken stepped up too far. Uh, and of course, you're against a numbers advantage at this point because the team fight had gone terribly wrong. And RPG stepping up way too far in that lane without numbers to begin with, getting engaged on by BTG when they didn't even have their level 20. So BTG blowing this game wide open. Now they do have their 20s, though. The healing is online for Zeratul. The armor online for Malfurion here. Of course, indestructible for Johanna. Haunt and play of the game for the carries. That is a terrifying combo to put together. And this could be a devastating loss for RPG to suffer. The boss is going mostly unattended. LK hovering with it as he's the one with escape, just in case. Still gets some reminded anyway, just for good measure. Yeah, but so. this is great news. They're managing to put on some good pressure onto RPG. LLK forced to back up. There's the buried alive. No planet cracker this time. Just a huge amount of damage onto 619. Yeah, just wanting to stop the advance of BTG. There goes the arrow, but Ooh. it's just completely whiffed. That's just the play of the game, trying to get Hanzo into the top lane here. But RPG, they do have a lot of control here. They've got the lurking arm. If it comes out, they've got all of the, the stall potential from this Phoenix. And we see Planet Cracker just used to destroy the advantage of BTG's minion wave. I'm kind of down with it. Kind of down with it. They're yep. buying themselves some time here, preventing this keep going down is the attempt here. Warden's Cage is dropped. Dancing is the target, but they can't get to him. C is dropped low. There's the horde, and Maya pushed into the boss, gets taken out. Keep is down, but the boss is also dead. Chicken is forced to retreat here as Rong goes down as well with two members down color. BTG are moving in for the core. And that could very well be game. Chicken now the target. Zeratul looking at picking up some more damage. BTG focusing entirely on this core. Minion wave is coming in. C in a bit of trouble here. Phoenix has to be very careful. Chicken just dancing on the backside of this fight. Uses the Q to try to get some damage, but BTG. Is dodged. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's Ladies it. and gentlemen. For good measure. Yep. Nicely done. When what looked like an easily lost game. RPG dominant throughout that game. 
BTG recover and they move up 2-1 in favor of RPG right now. It was honestly like absolutely dominated from start to like 90% of the game by RPG. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they took control of the rotations. They got the first turn ins. I thought they played their camps better and even the team fights better than their opponents. Maybe they caught their opponents off guard a little bit with that Entomb style combination, but still RPG just playing so well during the early portions of the game. It was just the one misstep, you know, stepping up too far when members of your team are showing elsewhere on the map. They weren't able to pick up those kills. Or, or sorry, they weren't able to stop those kills from coming in. Um, and, and BTG, they just turn everything around in that top team fight down the talent tier. Now, you, if you've got to give MVP in this game, and I hope the Chinese production team will agree with us when we see it, you got to give that to Zeratul. Because yeah. LLK godlike plays in that game the void prisms not even as an engaged tool just part way through the fight zoning out different heroes every single time that was a game winning hero for btg absolutely agree we'll see what they end up doing with that uh, mvp status but it, it's so unfortunate when you have a game like that goes so clean uh and then you have just one misstep that ends up basically snowballing yourself into defeat. Yeah. So RPG, it kind of looked like during the later stages of the game, they weren't sure how to close everything out. You know, um, Maiev was looking for fights in areas where maybe she shouldn't have been, uh, stuff like that. The full, the cleanness of their execution wasn't there, but again, like you were mentioning how it was Zeratul played, and I really feel like the start of, you know, BTG finding their ways back into the game was the way that Void Prison was played during that bottom side fight, you know, waiting for that sanctification, waiting for the Warden's Cage to go out, voiding the backline, and then pushing in. I think they only got one kill off of that Void, but still, you stopped that huge Wombo combo from RPG, and then you, you were able to push in, start taking control of the map, so Zeratul just playing out of his mind. What an insane comeback by B.